Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I'm going to share some projects that I made using Folk Arts Home Decor Chalk Paint and Waxes. The line of paints come in 42 different colors, but I picked my five favorite to um, make this kind of beachy looking scene. Now you can use this paint on any surface pretty much. You can use it on raw wood, painted wood, even like glossy wood without any prep work. I've even used it on paper. It's really easy to work with and you can get that trendy chalk paint finish distress look that everybody's loving right now. So you can kind of revamp your old junky stuff and make it look like new, but like old new, but like cool old new. I want you to check out the video description because I'll have links to our sponsor plaid as well as uh, all the products I used in inspiration. So make sure you check that out after you watch this fun project tutorial. Let's go to the table and make it happen. Today I'm going to show you how to get all of these looks with your Folk Art Home Decor Chalk Paint. The first thing you want to do is make sure that your paint is stirred up and I stirred them up with little popsicle sticks and then I saved the popsicle sticks because they're a great color swatch. Now I used um, the paint on a piece of masonite here. Here you can see the raw wood and I just kind of blended the colors just to see what I could get and so I could look at the finish after it was all dry. I'm going to use that actually as a base of a painting in a future video but I just wanted to get that idea right off the bat. You can see the color will shift a little bit darker after it's dry, which is common with acrylic paint. So you can see that subtle shift. Um, so I think it's really important to kind of swatch it out before you begin so you know what you're going to get. Before you begin painting, make sure your surfaces are free of dust and dirt. These paintbrushes in the home decor chalk paint line are wonderful. The um, bristles are securely seated in the ferrule. They are um, glued down really well. You're not going to lose bristles. And if you take care of these brushes, they should last you for years and years. You may need some smaller brushes though. If you are um, doing something tiny like this to get in the corners, you can use any um, artist brushes for that. Try to find the kind that have the hog bristles just because they'll be stiff enough to push around this thick paint. Here, the inside of the box is a raw wood. I found that sometimes raw wood needs an additional coat because the wood kind of soaks up the paint really well. So keep that in mind while you're working. The outside of this box, I'm painting this gorgeous blue. Now I will put a list in the video description of all the colors I use so you can find these products at Plaid Online yourself. Now you can see I'm just using one coat on top of this glossy enamel paint and it is covering beautifully. In fact, that's my favorite thing about these paints is the one coat coverage over previously painted surfaces. Make sure you do a good coat on the front and the sides of your box. You wanna make sure that you, um, you do a neat job now now and it will save you time later on. The box we just painted actually came from a yard sale. It was in a free bin and it had all these wooden beads in it and I thought why not try painting the wooden beads as well since I really didn't care for the colors they came in. I used the packaging from one of the larger uh, wax brushes to put some beads in and now I'm just pouncing on some leftover paint on top of the beads and it did cover in one coat. I'm going to make some in a variety of different colors. Aren't they pretty? Then after you're done, you wanna make sure you put them on a bead board to dry. And to make my own bead board, I took some scrap styrofoam, put waxed toothpicks in them, and then just slid them on there to dry. As you can see when I was painting the beads, I like to use plastic packaging as paint palettes. So I put a little more yellow paint into that plastic packaging and I'm using a large brush that won't fit into my jar of paint to paint this little wooden storage box. You can see how beautifully it covers in one coat, especially since the yellow is very close to the tone of the natural wood, but you could go ahead and add two coats if you wish. Go ahead, you take your time and make sure you cover every surface with the paint. Home decor chalk paint is so great for updating old frames. This one I bought at the dollar store a few years ago and I wasn't crazy about the red paint job. So I'm going over it with some white. It is so easy to cover these old paint jobs and I'm gonna be showing you a fun distress technique on this frame in a little bit. Now this is a really fun finishing technique and what I love about it is that you do it all in one step. So what you wanna first do is base coat your um, box white and I just used a cigar box here. Then put a few colors on your palette and with that same white brush, pick up some of the turquoise color and then streak it across in the white paint so it blends. And then you can pick up some of that nice mossy green and streak that in. The colors just blend so beautifully together and you can add um, a little bit of yellow and red and any other color that you've been using. To clean my brush in between, I'm just kind of pouncing it off on that um, craft paper that 
that I have on my work surface so that I don't um, muddy the colors up too much and I keep them nice and fresh. And I just love these colors together. Just make sure you use a stir stick to pull the color out of your container so you don't contaminate it. Look how pretty this looks and that's completely done. Now, because this is a cigar box, I don't want to uh, let it dry like this because there may have been some paint that it seeped into the cracks. So what I'm gonna do here is actually just open it up and stick a, um, a clean popsicle stick stir stick in there so it can dry open. Now I've given everything several hours to dry. I'm going to go over this white frame with some of this turquoise paint. Now you can see if you just paint it on light, you can get a distressed look like that, but I'm actually going to give it a full coat that I can sand off later. Now, if you don't want to do that, you could actually take like a baby wipe or a damp rag and actually wipe some of that paint off now while it's wet. That's called wet distressing. It's the same technique you would use if you were using the antiquing wax or um, an antiquing glaze. It just is a different way to get it a distressed look, but I'm going to do the sanding method with this one as soon as it's dry. That's why I like to work on so many projects at the same time, because while I'm waiting for one thing to dry, I can be painting something else. This paint is so much fun to use, I can't even stress it enough. Now here's an example of the dry brush distressing I just told you about. So what you want to do is um, use a wide brush and you want to make sure you're just getting a little bit of paint on the bristles. So see how I'm using that uh, other paintbrush to kind of gently load up the uh, end of the flat brush there. I love this brush. It's one of my favorites of the folk art chalk paint line. So then I'm grabbing my yellow box and I'm just going to gently drag the brush across. Now see how you get that very, very soft soft, streaky look. It dries so quickly. It's such a great technique and you don't have to worry about sanding through too many layers of paint by accident. Simply load up your brush and just drag it across the surface. It's that easy. This paint can be used for stenciling and stamping too. Here I'm using a makeup applicator. It's the foam wedges you can find in the dollar store. And I'm picking up some paint from the lid and just applying it to this medallion rubber stamp that I've had for ages. It's actually a foam stamp, not a rubber stamp. Now just press it straight down without wiggling. Give it some firm pressure. And when you lift it up, you'll have a beautiful image. Because this paint is so thick, it really marries the distance between the stamp and the surface really well. I thought it'd also be cute to stamp the word treasure across my um, surface because this is a treasure box after all. So I'm using some of the turquoise paint and some letter foam stamps to spell that right across the lid of my box. Now I'm going to show you another distressing technique using the sanding block that comes from the home decor chalk paint line. This is a spongy sanding block that is really easy to work with. So my blue paint has dried on top of the white paint of my picture frame and I'm gently scuffing it to remove some paint. Now don't worry if you take too much paint off because you can always go back in and touch it up with more home decor chalk paint. Once you're happy with the amount of distressing you've sanded off, go ahead and wipe off any of the paint dust with a clean rag. Now let's apply the wax. I'm using one of the Folk Art wax paint brushes to apply a thin layer of clear wax. It's going to go on kind of gritty, but don't worry because you're going to be buffing all that out after it's dry. After you apply the wax, and I'm only going to show you this once because it's the same um, technique for every item that I've done here. Once you've applied the wax, let it dry overnight before buffing. All right, here we are a day later. I've got a clean white cloth and I'm simply gonna buff my wax into a uh, uniform sheen. The longer you rub the wax, the smoother and glossier it will be. This is gonna take a little elbow grease. In fact, you might wanna test out the wax on a um, small project or a scrap first to see if you like this process. It will take some elbow grease, so I want you to be aware of that. Here's two other uses for the folk art wax. Here I used it on some raw wood. I just painted some on, let it dry, and buffed it out, and it gave it a beautiful luster compared to the raw wood on the back side. Another cool idea for using the wax is actually painting it on your art journal pages, letting it dry, and then just easily buffing it. It'll keep your journal pages from sticking together and give it a uniform, glossy look. So there's another way you can use this product. 
Here's how all the projects turned out. I've buffed them with the wax and I really love the look. The only thing I'd do differently would be the beads. I wouldn't wax them. Um, it was very time consuming to try to wax all those beads. Next time I would just spray them with a matte sealer when I was done. But as for everything else, I really love the look. If you want more projects, ideas, and instructions, please go to plaidonline.com. You'll find a ton of project inspiration and instruction. Plus, you can buy all of these paints and tools right online. Sign up for Plaid's newsletter for special offers and project ideas delivered right to your inbox. I want to thank Plaid so much for sponsoring today. I want to thank you for watching. Please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Until next time, happy crafting.